Welcome to the No Quit Living Podcast. Our primary objective is to motivate and inspire our listeners to never quit. The reality of life is simple. We all fall. We all fail. At times, we get knocked down. The question is, do we get back up? Are we stronger? Are we better prepared to attain the maximum of our potential? Thank you for joining our No Quit Tribe. As you go for your greatness today, never quit. And remember, we rise by lifting others up. Welcome to episode number 288 of the No Quit Living Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher J. Worth, and today's theme of the day is no other way but through. Our quote of the day comes to us from Robert Frost. The best way out is always through. Before we kick off today's episode, I just would like to once again remind everybody that my first book that I wrote with Chris Wilberding is available now for pre-order. You can grab yourself a copy of The Positivity Tribe by heading over to thepositivitytribe.com. Please help us spread positivity, one person at a time. I enjoyed speaking with today's guest. Although we only recently connected, I had a lot of fun both during as well as after our interview. Matt Zinman has a personal goal of positively impacting 100 million people by the year 2025, and I absolutely love that. I hope you enjoy today's episode. Matt, I'd like to welcome you to the No Quit Living podcast. Thank you, Chris. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So the first question I ask everybody, and I know your answer, but I have to ask, is are you ready to positively impact at least one person today? Yeah, that's a rhetorical question. I'm pretty sure you know that. Um, I'm relentlessly positive, so I think we're going to do better than one. Awesome. But think about the fact that if we do one each and every single day, we compound it, We're going to get closer to your goal, which we will touch on later. But before that, I want to ask you if if you have your own no-quit story or perhaps a really challenging time where you could have given up or given in, but you didn't. Wow, I have to choose one, huh? So, uh, you know, that'll that'll take me back to uh, 2002. And uh, I'm I'm in my early 50s now, so uh, you know they do they do add up. And at that point, I actually uh, had two things happen. I got divorced and had uh, a young son at age two, and I also, in needing the flexibility, started my own company. So uh, it was important to me to be a 50% dad. So you know, I'm diapers and bottles and doing that half the time and getting a company going uh, the other half. And, uh, I, I made it through that, you know, to, you know, and I was, I was about two, two and a half years into it. And one of the, it was, a it's a marketing communication agency. So in order to go and win business, you have to invest. And at that point, you know, I was a virtual firm, you know, so it was a lot of the bricks and mortar versus virtual. Now, now of course the pendulum has swung all the way, uh, with COVID, but back then it was, you know, if you're virtual, what's that? It was, it was this new thing. And, I went after a piece of business, uh, pretty pretty major, invested in, got into the finals, and lost. And of course, you can't win them all. But the reason we lost, and you had the debrief with the marketing director, was they felt like they couldn't take the chance to go bricks and mortar, right? Their tail was on the line, which I understand, of course, but it was a big hit. It was a very big hit. And I had to decide whether or not I had to go back and get a job go back and, you know, and, and, and not continue to, um, you know, claw and scratch at, at entrepreneurship. Uh, but I, I, I pressed on and and I think that that freedom as, as a value, both in terms of what it did for me and, and what was important to me to have that time with my son and, and beyond. And ever since 2002 working on my own, um, you know, there have been a lot of hard times, but it's been completely worth it. So, uh, first off, I appreciate you touching on that. Going back to that story, what is it and maybe why is it that you feel that not only you but other people keep going? Why is it that some people give up and throw in the towel versus others that say, you know what, I'm just going to dig my heels in and keep going? Well, I mean, certainly it comes down to values. Uh, For one, like I just mentioned, freedom. And what, you know, where that was, uh, financial security at that time, uh, you know, was tough. You know, I, I, you know, I did have to sell a car to send them to camp one year 
you know, th- those kinds of things. Some people do not have that kind of risk threshold and they, they need to go back and, uh, and have a little bit more stability. If you're talking about the example of an entrepreneur, I'm just staying in the same, uh, same scenario. Uh, and it's not for everybody. It's not for the faint of heart and it's not for somebody without the grit to, uh, to press on. So a question we ask everybody is if you had to define yourself, but you could only use one word, what word would you pick? Can it be hyphenated? It, it can be. You are the guest, so you're in <laughs> I'm, charge. I'd like, I'd like to go relentlessly positive, even though you can't usually do uh, a hyphen on an adjective, but that's, that's where I'm going to go with this. So take 20 seconds and define that. I, I think it continues on the theme that we just discussed, which is – um, there have been any number of life challenges that we all face. And I've certainly had my share. And when you um, accept that there's just no other way but through, uh, whatever that is in life, and that, uh, you know, there is, I, I do have the no quit attitude uh, in, in that way. It's just not an option. Then the rest comes down to how you handle it and the choices that you make and choosing as much as you can, the positive and what you get out of even the most difficult experiences so that you can learn from them and, and build on them, make your life uh, more enriching. I love that. No other way but through. It doesn't mean it's it's easy and it's going to be simple, but I think once you make that decision, then the actions follow. And uh, the only way I'm going, getting through this is I'm just putting my head down and going. So I'm glad you touched on that. Before we jump into uh, your podcast as well as your book, wanted to ask you if there's anything that you're currently reading or perhaps you've read something recently that you'd like to recommend to our listeners. That's a great question. I, uh, between all the writing and I also run a nonprofit and uh, my family, I, I haven't I haven't had the opportunity to read a lot as, as important as that is. I would recommend a book that had a, a major effect on me, which is uh, Blink by Malcolm Gladwell. And the premise of it is that uh, he you know, proved uh, in, in the way that he does that those who trust their gut make as good, if not better decisions than those who overanalyze things. And that's been a major uh, time saver. It's really helped me build my own self-trust and, uh, and an energy saver for that matter as well. And I found it to be true. It's a f- fantastic book. I believe it's a couple years old. I think it came out in... Yeah, more than a couple of years. Yeah. yeah, sure. So speaking of of your book and, and books, wanted to ask if you wouldn't mind telling our listeners a little about your book that you wrote. Thank you. Well, it's called Z-isms, Insights to Live By, and it covers four different areas uh, involving self-discovery and mindset, you know, everything internal, and then getting into relationships and personal interactions uh, with the external. And then we get more into amplified awareness, mindfulness, doing things intentionally, and how that then flows into things around entrepreneurship. And then ultimately, the book culminates around life enrichment, which is, uh, you know, at the heart of it all. And there's a life enrichment action plan. And there's a 90-day structure uh, that reflects back on the various things that were covered in the book as exercises and reflections that people can do to give themselves a personal growth framework. So if someone's looking for like a tune-up, you know, and they're already into personal development, it's there. And there are certain things a la carte, but um, I really naturally put everything that I had into the book. And uh, it's written like a personal conversation as well. So there's a lot of me and, and, you know, disclosures and anecdotes along the way. Awesome. So follow-up question to that is, is there a second book and the works are coming? I've been asked that question and the answer is ask me in 10 years because I, I put everything into this one and I really, I, the, the one thing I will say that I've thought about is a potential college edition that I would swap out um, some chapters because I, I run a nonprofit called the Internship Institute. I founded in 2007 for, you know, now coming up on, I started that in 05, that whole endeavor. And there's a lot that I can speak to around particularly college students. And I would swap out some of the chapters and put some of that learning in there and, uh, and have that sold within colleges. So maybe a different edition. So speaking of colleges and something that's near and dear to me, a lot of our clients are college sports teams. 
How have you maintained this positive attitude and approach during these very difficult and challenging times we're dealing with right now? You know, I, I, I'd i say that it, it, it does come back to uh, what, what honestly is at the foundation of my book, which is a concept uh, called, and a principle that, that that's a guiding principle called earned confidence. And what it basically speaks to is the fact that we've all been through everything that we have. We've, we all have that ringer and we've made it through. And so we have the earned confidence to know that whatever's going on right now, even if we don't have the answers, we're going to make it through that too. And we're going to make it through whatever's coming our way. So that also eliminates things like worry and anxiety. It eliminates on the back end regrets, um, resentments. So it's really about grounding in gratitude and self-kindness. And we can talk more about that. I want to keep the answer succinct. But with that as a foundation, um, it, it just really gives me the ability to see things in as pot- positive of a light as possible. So we've got to touch on on one thing you said, grounding and gratitude. I've talked about that a lot in this show, and some guests have spoken about the importance of gratitude. So have to ask you to elaborate just a little bit. What is and why is it so important to be grounded in gratitude? Well, I think for one that, you know, if we go back in that third section of the book around heightening mindfulness and amplified awareness, harnessing gratitude, there is a section actually around the law of attraction, which, you know, not everybody really can relate to exactly as it, as it is. It's kind of based in quantum physics, but the ulti- I think everyone does understand that, that it's driven by gratitude and that gratitude is what keeps you in the present. That's where the joy of life, that's where life enrichment really happens. So when you're not, you know, not caught up in, um, you know, worry and anxiety or regrets and things that take you out of the present and you really look to gratitude to be that grounding force. And from a practical standpoint, you're folding it into your day. You, 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 you look to, to do different things and, and embed them into, um, you know, your daily living that's going to keep you grounded and that's going to help your life be more enriched by experiencing things in the moment. I think it's so important to to bookend your day with gratitude. And I know people have journals, affirmations, and, and lots of different things that they do. But I also know on the flip side of that, there's some people that just wake up and they just think of one or two things that they're grateful for. And I think there's there's science behind it, but there's there's true value in it. And I'm glad you touched on that. So changing lanes here for a second, you have some exciting news about your brand new podcast. So I wanted to ask if you wouldn't mind just telling our listeners not only a little bit about your podcast, but where they can find it. Right. Well, thank you. Um, it, 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 you know, um, springboards off the book and, and in publishing the book, quite honestly, Chris, I, I hadn't planned on doing the podcast. It kind of unfolded on its own. And uh, now I'm already up to episode 10, uh, you know, as of uh, as of our conversation here today. Uh, and it's really a two in one where I am interviewing guests weekly and I'm also doing a weekly solo show. So they're very different. The solo shows are taking different concepts uh, from the book to some degree and and some other things like I'm drawing on my uh, career uh, expertise uh, with uh, with the Institute uh, as well and trying to address things in a, in a timely way. And uh, the same thing for my guests and looking forward to having you on for that matter as well. Um, Insights to Live By is uh, easy enough to find, uh, as is my book on my site, mattzinman.com. It's available, uh, you know, everywhere pretty much that you uh, will find your podcast on uh, on Apple. So lots of different things to sample and, and hopefully will bring uh, enrichment to people who uh, who do. Awesome. So if you could go back to the 20-year-old version of yourself – and give yourself just one piece of advice, what would it be? Hmm. The 20 year old version of myself is in college. And you know, I don't really know that I've answered this question in the way I'm about to, which is I might not have joined the fraternity that I did or one at all. And the, the, the reason is, is because it does label you. It does immediately draw you into uh, a, a very defined group of friends, obviously. And, and it prevents you from making other friends. 
and and so forth. I love the sports, right? The intramural sports. I love the camaraderie. But if I went back, uh, I'm I'm I have wonderful friends. Don't get me wrong. But there is that part of me that is. I wonder what life would have been like had I chosen to stay independent. That's interesting, and I appreciate your your candor with that. So, if I had the opportunity to grant you dinner with anybody, dead or alive, who would you pick, and why? Hmm. You're really trying to sh- you know throw me some curveballs here. Um, I would like to have dinner, <laughs> if, you know, ever. Um, I- I'm just going to go with Abraham Lincoln. I I only for really I. I hadn't ever thought of this question before, but he is the first person that comes to mind and he's not around anymore. So I'd really like to get to know him better and, uh, you know, the tough times that he faced and, you know, brilliant guy. And obviously he has stood the test of time uh, for, uh, you know, from all from all leaders. So uh, that interests me. I could give you like eight different answers on eight other days, but that's where I am in this moment. No, that's that's the beauty of the question is it's kind of. You know, today, tomorrow, next week, you'll have a different answer. But he would be Wait, a fascinating person to. Can I go back? You can. I'm going to go Wayne Wayne Gretzky on the alive person. I'm just going to because I'm an ice hockey player, so I'll just get that quick answer in as well. You can't go back. Unfortunately, we're going to delete it. So no I went, I went past and present. All right, fine, delete. No, right. we keep everything as is. So how about okay. this? Instead okay. of sure. two dinners, we'll have one. You, it'll be you, Wayne Gretzky, and Abraham Lincoln. And That'd be awesome. I'd love to listen to. Wayne Gretzky try to explain to to Abraham Lincoln what ice hockey is. Right. And that he misses 100% of the shots he never takes. One of my all-time favorite quotes. So, (laughs) we're jumping now to what we call our hot seat questions. And the only request we have for you is you spit out the first thing that comes to mind. Got it. I already thought I was on the hot seat. You are. It's it's more hot. This this seat's a little bit hotter. It's getting hotter. Okay. All right, you have one last meal. You can pick absolutely anything. What do you pick? Veal Parmesan. Favorite smell? Roses. <laughs> favorite sport? Ice hockey. All-time favorite team? The Philadelphia Flyers. Favorite movie? It's a Wonderful Life. Great, great flick. Do you have a favorite quote? Probably the one I just said uh, with Wayne Gretzky in terms of... Uh, Missing 100% of shots you never take. And I and the one under my signature is that there's no substitute for experience. I love that quote by Wayne Gretzky. Favorite book? I'm going to go blank because we, we talked about it. It's on my mind. First thing. Favorite group, singer, or band? Led Zeppelin. And if you were stuck in a foxhole and you could only pick one person to have your back, who would it be? Uh, Rambo. Rambo. That's that's not a bad one. That's, I think out of almost three hundred episodes, you're the first person I think that ever said Rambo. That's that would not <laughs> be a bad who guy. Who do I want next to me? Who's you know who's the biggest person in the foxhole? The badass. I yeah. love it. So, one of our favorite words is the word accountability. On our clothing line, we have everything hashtag accountability. So I wanted to ask you. If you wouldn't mind briefly telling telling our listeners what accountability means to you, or how do you personally define accountability? Well, I I think that number one, accountability goes to whatever goals you have set, and along with those goals, a certain self belief, knowing that you're going to achieve them, and in having that self belief, that no matter what happens, uh, it really is a no quit situation, that you hold yourself accountable to keep going. Uh, in order to fulfill what it is that you have have made inevitable in terms of your achievement in having the self-belief that it's already happened anyway. Does awesome. That make sense? No, it def- definitely makes sense, and I, I appreciate you, you expanding on that. So during these challenging times, I was curious if there's somebody – famous or on social media that you've been following that really spreads a positive message that you'd like to recommend to our listeners? Uh, I'm a fan of Lorena Acosta on LinkedIn and she is a personal branding expert. I've had her on my show. I'm just, uh, I greatly admire her and you know, she is definitely a go giver, uh, always looking to, to help people in every way that she can. She's very inspiring. Awesome. I've, I have not 
familiar with her, so I'll definitely have to check her out. And then for our listeners that want to connect with you or find out more about your book as well as your podcast, if you wouldn't mind, again, just letting them know where they can find you. Yeah, sure thing. So mattzinman.com is uh, is actually my new site in, in conjunction with the podcast, uh, and the book is there. And, you know, I, I, I didn't write the book. You know, I'm not a coach. I, I didn't write the book to be uh, a business development tool. I wrote it because I felt it a responsibility from what I've learned in life to share with people because I know it's going to be helpful to those who read it. And so all I ask is, you know, to find it on Amazon or samples through my site and it's free to read the first part. And then, you know, people will know if it's for them. My goal is to get it out there. Awesome. I appreciate that. And the last question I have for you is you have any parting words you'd like to leave with our listeners today? I do. Uh, one of the things I want to go back to because earned confidence is really at the foundation of the book. And we talked about gratitude, but we didn't really go back to the mention of self-kindness. And what's important here is that when people think of kindness, they typically think of it as toward others. And of course, that's incredibly important um, in being a go-giver, for example. But it really does start with self-kindness. And the reason is because when people in personal development look at things that they're striving for, such as self-love, self-esteem, uh, and the like, it's really hard to get your arms around that and and know what it's going to take in order to feel that way about yourself. But if you stick with the notion of self-kindness, that's really a yes or a no in terms of any given circumstance, any decision that you make, how you're treating yourself any given day. And so if you just look to self-kindness as that grounding um, foundation, that stepping stone for your personal growth and development, uh, you can't go wrong. It's going to keep calibrating you to stay on course. So what I... Uh, the, the the question I'll pose is number one, because to buy in, why be anything less than kind to yourself? Hopefully everyone answers that in the affirmative. And I'll end with be nothing less than kind to yourself. I love it. I appreciate your, your time, what you share with us. And I hope that our listeners follow up and connect with you. And I know that you and I will connect again soon. Yeah, for sure. Thanks so much for having me, Chris. Re- really appreciate it. Thank you for listening to episode number 288. Matt is definitely relentlessly positive, something that hits home with our No Quit tribe. Matt touched upon the idea of earned confidence a couple of times. I think it was a very interesting idea and concept. When I asked Matt for his favorite quote, he shared one that I absolutely love. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So I would like to challenge the listeners to take that quote to heart. We all miss 100% of the shots that we don't take. So today, go ahead and take that shot. Don't worry about making it, being perfect, or even questioning what if. Just go ahead and take that shot. And remember, we rise by lifting others up. And lastly, to our listeners, thank you. We truly appreciate your time, and we hope our episodes inspire you to keep on attacking life and never giving up. To quote Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, it's always too early to quit.